What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giants, your boy Solomon Riddell. Today's video we're covering an instructive Czech defense game played by Frank Holtz because he was going up against none other than Grandmaster Gary Kasparov back in the era of 88 in a simultaneous exhibition. And he actually went on to beat Kasparov by using the Czech defense in amazing fashion. Now here Kasparov starts this thing off with E4, in which case guys, when we play the Czech, we're starting off with a regular perk, right? We're playing D6, we're playing Knight F6, but now against a move like Knight C3, we're not going to be fianchettoing our dark squared bishop but instead playing this move of c6. And yes, guys, this move of c6 can support a move like b5 later on in the game, but really the main purpose behind this move is to allow us this option of queen a5, which does two things. First off, it pins the knight on c3 to the king on e1, and by doing so, we're simply threatening to win a pawn here, right? I mean, if white here plays a move like knight f3, thank you for the pawn on e4, and they're black with a crushing advantage. And the moment that white defends the pawn, we now see the second purpose of queen a5, which is to support this e5 push guys with the check defense we're really fighting for the center of the board very quickly at move five putting some pressure on f4 and d4 and notice how it's supported by both the pawn on d6 and our queen on a5 as well here kasparov decides to play this move of d captures followed by f5 one of the main ideas against the check defense really trying to gain some space on the king side of the board but now black has a lot of leverage and a lot of ideas to work with. I mean, popular moves include knight bd7, just naturally developing our pieces, as well as this move of bishop c5, really fighting for this long diagonal from a7 all the way to g1, and at the moment, preventing white from castling kingside. But here in the game, we see this idea of b5 followed by b4, kicking this knight back, and then knight bd7. Now guys, in the game, Kasparov plays castling kingside, which gives us this option of bishop c5 with check, but I want to mention that even here, if Kasparov played this move of bishop e3, we're still going to play bishop c5, guys. In chess, we want to activate our pieces as much as we possibly can, and this square of c5 is by far the best option for black, and it really attacks white's best minor piece at the moment, right? I mean, let's just compare the bishops, right? This bishop on e3 is on the opposite color of its own pawn. So it has a lot of flexibility, a lot of range, a lot of, you know, just activity. This bishop on d3, on the other hand, isn't doing much at all, right? In fact, it's just defending and really babysitting this pawn on e4 and also this pawn on c2. This bishop on d3 is almost a tall pawn and this bishop on e3 is very active. So why not play bishop c5 and try to trade it off? Look, if white wants to play a move like bishop captures bishop, we can take back with the knight or with the queen and have a very easy and flexible game there. And if a move here like queen d2 from white, we can just castle kingside actually capture on e3 and then continue to fight for this long diagonal and now white has a hard choice to make right i mean do they play a move like queen e2 giving us complete control of these dark squares or do they want to play a move here like queen captures on b6 against this we're actually not going to take with the knight because first off this pawn on e5 falls but instead we're going to play this move of a takes b6 now our pawns are doubled but guys in chess doubled pawns aren't always bad in fact at the moment we have a nice space advantage on the queen side of the board and a rook on a8 which is on a semi-open file really making this rook on a1 babysit that pawn on a2 and here is black we have very natural chess ahead i mean moves like rook e8 defending the pawn nice c5 ideas even rook a5 right really trying to defend that pawn on e5 guys from this point it's black that has all the counter-attacking chances and a very easy game See, I'll go back to this position. If white does play a move like bishop e3, we're still going to continue with bishop c5 and really fight for this key long diagonal from a7 to g1. But guys, here in the game, we see castling kingside, in which case, okay, we're going to play bishop c5 with check. And here we have this idea of knight g4 currently threatening to simply play knight f2 and win the exchange, right? Because once we do drop our knight in here, the rook's going to have to capture back. And we now go up the exchange, which is two points in material, five to three. Here, Kasparov surprisingly, however, plays knight g3. And when I was first analyzing this game, I was thinking, gosh, why on earth did white play this move? And why on earth didn't black play knight f2 with check? I mean, we we're just threatening it. Why don't we just play this move? Well, guys, here, Kasparov, obviously very strong on his theory, had a key idea against this check and that's because he played this move of knight g3 now here black again did not play knight f2 but if black did black could actually be in some serious trouble here because now white can take that knight and play the key idea of knight h5 very active chess attacking the pawn on g7 look if we play a move like rook g8 we do hold on to the pawn but now white could play a move like bishop c4 putting some pressure 
on f7 with knight g5 ideas in the air and notice guys if we play rook g8 our king is not going to be castling kingside for, for the rest of the game and if we castle queenside our king is going to be very vulnerable to attack because our pawns are so far advanced so rook g8 isn't the answer if we play a move like g6 white has knight g7 check ideas and finally here guys if we play a move like castling kingside white actually has this idea of queen d2 and now black with a very hard choice to make do we just simply lose our minor piece on f2 or do we save that piece but then face this move of queen g5, right? I mean, just threatening a mate in one. Guys, I don't care how you chop this up. There's simply no way that black is going to be surviving this game very long. So y'all, Kasparov plays this move of knight g3, right? With this knight h5 idea. So here Holtzk is black responds by playing h5 himself. Yet again, threatening this move of knight f2 a check because if the rook takes and the bishop captures back and knight h5 is no longer possible because we simply capture back with the rook. But now white again plays this move of knight g5 which yet again stops us from playing knight f2 a check because if we do play knight f2 white captures back and because of this knight g5 option all of a sudden the queen attacks that pawn on h5 and knight takes h5 yet again as possible here black in a ton of trouble this king is uh let's just say that it's not in its best spot right i mean you castle king side you're in trouble you stay in the center you're in trouble you castle queen side things aren't looking good this position is near resignable for black so y'all, we got some very tricky chess here, right, from Kasparov. I mean, moves like knight g3, knight g5, a lot of knight h5 ideas in the air the moment that this knight on g4 moves. But here Holtz keeps his composure and simply plays this move of knight df6, which does two things. First off, it does support this move of knight g4 in the future, but really it defends the pawn on h5, right? We're making space on the queen side, we're defending this pawn, and yet again, we're threatening to play this move of knight f2. So finally, Kasparov goes, okay, knight f2 is a threat now because you have two defending pieces on this pawn on h5 so i'm now going to play this move of queen f3 guys in a position like this i highly recommend not giving up two pieces for a rook or even two pieces two minor pieces for a rook and a pawn guys 99 percent of the time in chess i would much rather have two minor pieces than a rook and a pawn instead here from black we see this move of bishop a6 i mean talk about an active bishop pair pouncing down on d3 and all the way down to the square of g1 kasparov responds with this move of bishop d2 just putting a little bit of indirect pressure on this queen on a5 but here black just continues developing right i mean this rook on a8 isn't that active right we haven't moved it in fact its scope is limited right now to this pawn on a7 so why not just swing it over a little bit to the left rook d8 put some more pressure on this bishop on d3 and now kasparov plays the move of a3 which seems like a very solid idea right i mean this pawn on b4 is pinned we can't take this pawn because we'd simply lose our queen and here guys if white takes on b4 it seems as if uh you know our queen's going to be attacked as well as our bishop not just by the pawn but also by the rook but here from black we see this move of bishop captures on d3 right whole idea being if you see a move like c takes b4 we have queen b5 options and here if the move c takes d3 is played which is what we saw in the game we still have queen b5 attacking this pawn on d3 guys notice how big of a target this pawn is and there's really no way for white to defend it right i mean this knight on g5 is far away from home cannot defend that pawn neither can the knight on g3 this bishop could not defend the pawn for the rest of the game and there's no way for a rook to get into the action here so guys we're simply going to win this pawn here kasparov plays this move of bishop captures on b4 but black just continues by taking back and then playing this move of h4 right continuing to make space on the king side of the board playing aggressive and attacking chess and notice guys this knight only has one square that's the only option that white has white can't bring this knight to h1 or f1 or really any of these squares that i'm highlighting even the square of h5 right we simply capture it off with the rook but guys this move of knight e2 is the only move that white has and we now see this crushing move of rook captures on d3 not queen takes but rook captures back because notice this queen on f3 is simply trapped white here continues with the move of knight c3 in which case black now takes on f3 with the rook and i think most players here probably would have just taken off the queen right but even then guys black here against kasparov would have been able to take the rook and then simply snatch off this knight and now black is up a full minor piece and guys you just don't see it every day where a player like kasparov is down a full piece for no good reason so guys going back to this move of rook captures on f3 here white decides not to take on b5 but instead plays this move of g captures on f3 continuing to attack the queen and also this minor piece on g4 just trying to create some kind of imbalance here in fact g takes f3 is the computer recommendation but even then black is simply better we see holtz continue with queen captures on b4 and then here just castling kingside i mean 
opposed to castle and kingside, I think moves like queen takes b2 and knight takes g4 are totally fine and workable. But here, black from a practical standpoint is going, look, I'm up two points of material. I can take these pawns off the board whenever I want. Let me just get my king to safety and even consolidate my position here with moves like queen e7 and rook d8. I'm going up against Kasparov. I don't want to allow him any type of counterplay. Here, Kasparov plays this move of knight f3, probably hoping to get some g5 and f6 ideas on the board. But now black just continues with queen c5, right? I mean, just pouncing down on this rook. And the moment that this rook runs away, we see how it's continue with queen e3, continuing to just invade white's position. There's really no good way for white to get rid of this queen. Notice if I move like rook e1, we simply say thank you for the knight. Here, white actually captures off on e5, but now black's able to simply take on e4 with a ton of ideas in the air. I mean, here, black guys is just simply winning this game. Kasparov tries to hang on with this move of rook f3, but we now see this brilliant idea from black of h3. I think most players here, including myself, would have just ran away with the queen. And if you do run away somewhere with the queen, that's totally fine. But here, guys, this move of h3 is absolutely brilliant. Holy being, we're taking away the square of g2 from this king on h1. And here, if white decides to take on e3, which Kasparov did not do, we now have a mate in one with knight f2. Guys, this king has nowhere to go. Brilliant idea from black there. So going back to h3, guys, you can't take our queen because of knight f2. But on top of that, we're just threatening knight f2 anyways, right? So we see this move of rook gf1, whole idea being that now white can take the queen because this square is defended by the rook on the first rank. But we now just play this move of queen d2. And here, guys, Kasparov resigned the game. There's simply too many threats on the board to speak about. I mean, look, we're threatening a mate in one with queen g2. If we see a move here like rook captures on h3, we can always just play knight f2 and go up even more material. And uh, I just don't see any way for white to get out of this. I mean, even if a move like rook g1, right, trying to defend the mate in one threat, we're still going to have knight f2, right? White's going to have to give a material no matter what they do. And here, guys, the Czech perk went on to win against the former World Chess Champion back in the year of 88. Amazing game and some great ideas from Black there, guys. One of my key pieces of advice for you Czech players is to play aggressive and attacking active chess, right? I mean, going back to this move of C6, guys, we can't play this move of Queen A5 and then just start playing passive moves like E6, Bishop E7, Knight D7, Castling Kingside. We got to fight for the center, right? We got to play E5, right? We got to continue here with moves like b5 and b4 throw our pawns throw our pieces at the opponent's king i squares like bishop c5 with check and try to get active attacking chances thank you guys for watching today's video and special thanks to everyone who's become a patron my goal is to make this chess thing go full time and y'all are helping me create better chess content and drop it more often if you'd like to check out the theory behind the check perk click that video to the left if you'd like to see my full hippopotamus defense playlist another very interesting and underrated option for black and white as well click that playlist to the right leave a comment down below to let me know other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel and as always i appreciate you guys thanks for watching peace